Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I welcome all of you tonight as we join together to worship our Lord and to be strengthened in our faith in Him through His Word. Yesterday was Church Mortgage Burning Sunday, and we had the opportunity to finally burn our church mortgage and to give all praise, glory, and honor to our gracious God for allowing us to have this wonderful blessing, this facility, to be able to come here, to hear the word, to grow in our faith, and to be strengthened in our faith in Him, as well as to uh, fellowship together as brothers and sisters in Christ. And so with that, we'll begin our service this evening in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us please rise. And I'd like to have you turn back to page 52 in the front part of your hymnal. Page 52, as we follow evening prayer. And again, we do all the readings responsibly. O oh Lord, open my lips. And my mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lord God, you have brought us safely to this hour of evening prayer. And we thank you for providing all that we need for body and life. Bless us who have gathered in your name. Forgive our sins and speak to our hearts. Dispel our sorrows with the comfort of your word and receive our hymns of thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, our living Savior, who reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And we continue now at the bottom of page 55. You may be seated. And we'll read together, let my prayer rise before you. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. O Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let our prayers be acceptable in your sight. Come and help us in time of need, that we may sing your praise and holy joy, now and forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our psalm prayer for this evening is based on Psalm 100. God our Father, you made us, and we belong to you. Keep us mindful of your goodness, and that with thankful hearts we may sing your praise, who alone is worthy of honor and glory together with your Son and the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. And Lord God, grant us your Holy Spirit that we may hear and believe your word. Cleanse our minds and renew our hearts we may live for you here and hereafter, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our scripture lesson for this evening is recorded in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, beginning with the 19th verse. And here we are reminded that as God's children, it was all due to Christ's holy, precious blood that has washed away all of our sins and He who has brought us into His family through holy baptism. And as a result, we have His forgiveness and the certain hope of eternal life. And with this good news, we want to spur one another on to good deeds as we look forward to the Lord's return. And at the same time, we also encourage one another to come together and not give up meeting together 
as we see Judgment Day getting closer. We read, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain that is his body. If you remember, in the temple, it was divided in two. There was the holy place and the holy of holies. The holy of holies, no one was allowed into except the high priest once a year to offer sacrifice. It was a reminder that God was always present with them. The holy place the priest could go into. Well, there was a curtain that divided the two. And the curtain signified how our sins had separated us from God. And that there was no way that we could approach God. We had to go to the priest to, to seek out forgiveness. But when Jesus died, he split that curtain in two. And now we can come before the Lord. Um, as we confess our sins to him. As we... Uh, pray to him for whatever. And so we have this beautiful relationship with God. And he goes on. And since we have a great priest, it's Jesus, over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience, and having our bodies washed with pure water, that's baptism. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Here ends. Our reading. Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, and make known among the nations what he has done. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. The words for our meditation this evening are taken from Psalm 100, uh, verses 4 and 5. And the psalmist writes, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. So far, our text. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, I think it is safe to say that uh, all of you here this evening have owned your own home. It is one of the most precious earthly possessions that the Lord has blessed us with, besides our spouse and our children. And as wonderful as a blessing it is to have our own home, the thing is, you were shackled, weren't you, with a mortgage for what, about 30 years? Every month, right? You had to pull out the old checkbook, you had to write out that certain amount of money and send it in to pay for your house. And for some of you, there may have been absolutely no problem at all. And for others, well, maybe you ran into some difficult times when you thought that maybe you wouldn't be able to make those payments. That maybe you would lose your home. But for my, if that did happen, I pray that the Lord helped you through. And in the end, if not all of you, you were able to, 
to make that final payment, right? And boy, what a joyous occasion that was to be able to get that elephant off your back and to be able to say, hey, this is my house. I don't have to make payments anymore outside of the upkeep of the house. And I would hope and pray that all of you thank and praise the Lord and celebrate it. Now tonight, we come before the Lord to celebrate His goodness as we thank Him for His mercy and His faithfulness. This special service is meant to give him thanks for allowing us to have our own place, to be able to come together to worship our Lord, to be able to hear his word, to be able to, to grow in our faith, love, and appreciation of all that our Lord has provided for us, and the opportunity to be able to come together as brothers and sisters in Christ. To fellowship and encourage one another. Now, when it comes to thanking people for, for gifts, I, I, I would think that your parents would have brought you up when you got all those Christmas presents at Christmas time. <laughs> and then after that, from all your aunts and uncles and grandparents, and you had to write out thank you notes. That's one of the, as a kid, I hated doing that. For me, if I just had a card and I wrote thank you in it, that would have made me happy. Just send it off. My mom would not allow me to do that. She says, you have to talk about the gift that you received from the giver of that gift. Mm. Well, it's no different today. As we enter God's gates with thanksgiving, we thank Him for this, this beautiful building, this facility, this, this blessing, which has served us well for the last 32 years. I'll tell you, besides members and, and guests, we've had a lot of people, uh, delivery men, and other people that came into our, our facility and have seen the church. I've never heard one bad word. When I showed them the church, they said, wow, you have a beautiful facility. No, it's not ornate. It's not covered with gold or silver or anything like that. It's simple. But it serves its purpose. And besides, it's not the building that's important. It's you people that are important. The building isn't going to heaven. It's you that need to hear the word and grow in your faith. Yeah. But we thank you that we got a chance to, to have a building and we can sit here and not worry about getting wet from the rain. I'll tell you. It was on January 25th, 1984, when the congregation decided to relocate to the southwest side of Nina. When we made that decision, we had no idea how this was all going to come about. We had decided to, to do this instead of building our church on the, at that time on Cecil Street there next to the, the older one. Because we were so close to, to Trinity, we thought maybe coming to the west side would be better. Since there was no Wells Church over here. Well, we put our trust in the Lord. And lo and behold, the Lord went to work for us. Dave Voigt, our church president, was looking for a place 
to move to so that he could have his chickens and bees and whatnot just on the outskirts of, of Nina because this was the town of, of Nina. And he came across this place. There was a for sale sign. It was owned by a man by the name of George Schmidt. He worked at Kimberly Clark. He was retiring. He wanted to move to Arkansas as soon as possible. And he did not want to give it to a realtor because he figured they would jack up the price and it would never get sold. So he decided to sell it himself. When Dave stopped by and visited with him, he found out that George owned not only the house, but nine acres of land. Dave came back to the council. We had a special congregational meeting and we went ahead and bought it. It was really a gift from the Lord. For nine acres of land and a house, 95000 That's all they charged us. And then, it wasn't more than, what, two months later, three months later, our neighbors, kitty corner from us on Cecil Street, wanted to buy the parsonage. And so the money that we got for the parsonage, we were able to pay off the house in the nine acres of land. And then, it took several years, but in time, we sold the church and the school. And for two and a half years, we worshiped over here at uh, Conant, part of Nina High School in the Conant Auditorium. And then after we had saved a little bit more money, construction began on October 3rd, 1988. I remember that day. I was standing outside watching them dig the hole for the basement. Well, several months later, on June 11th, 1989, we dedicated this church to the Lord. And on that day, I remember the service, and we went outside, and we all had balloons, and we put Bible passages in the balloons, and, and we let them go. And I have no idea where they all went. Probably they all wound up in Lake Winnebago or Lake Michigan, wherever. But it was a great day. The cost of our facility was 475000 we were able to pay some of that off right away, but we still had to take out a loan of 185000 at 10 and 3 quarters percent for 20 years. Well, in the early 2000s, we almost had it paid off. We had gotten down to around 70000 and we were right on track. But then the city decided to improve Breezewood Lane, and so we had to pay for our fair share, and so we had to remortgage. And we decided at the same time to update the parsonage. But in time, back last June, June 20th, or June of 2020, the first week, in the midst of COVID, we were able to make that final last payment. We waited to celebrate because we wanted more people to come and celebrate with us. And so tonight we celebrate with thanksgiving to the Lord. We have seen many, many blessings from our services and from the things that have taken place here at Grace. But our thanks 
go far beyond those wonderful blessings. Did you know that we are in our 73rd year? In two years, in 2023, you will be celebrating your 75th anniversary as a congregation. And for all those years, God's goodness and forgiveness and love and mercy has been proclaimed from the pulpits. Whether it was at the wreck building in Nina or at the old church on Cecil Street or here. And throughout the history, you know, we fond memories of each Christmas and how the, the children had the great privilege of reminding us of how God put into action his plan of forgiveness to mankind as they announced the birth of our Savior. And I know some of you were members here, probably at the old church, and you remember those days when uh, you and maybe went to school there or the Sunday school and participated. Yeah. Or the Easter celebrations have also filled our hearts with joy as the message of the empty tomb was God's stamp of approval and all the work that his son had accomplished for our salvation. And as I said, throughout all those years, the pastors that you've had have faithfully proclaimed the gospel message, thanking God for his mercy his goodness, his compassion, his love from the pulpit. We've seen how God has claimed us his very own through our baptisms. At your baptism, whether it was here or, or, or at the old church or maybe at the wreck, it was God's way of bringing you into his family, making you his precious children, forgiving you of your sins, covering you with his holiness, and promising you eternal life. And then, month after month, we have received the blessing of his body and blood, in, with, and under the bread and the wine, in Holy Communion, to give us the assurance of our forgiveness, we are loved by God. And that one day he will take us home to heaven. And there have been the times when we've had people come forward to become husband and wife. How they said their vows to each other. And ask the Lord to be front and center in their marriage, to bless their marriage, and to make it grow, and to love each other. And then, there were those who were loved ones, were then finally able to go home, to be with our Lord. And we came here, and were reminded, through God's precious word, of how this is not the only life we live. But we've got a whole other life ahead of us that God has prepared for us. Where we will live with Him in perfect peace and joy and forever and ever. What a victory celebration that is when the Lord calls us home. Where we will be with all the saints in heaven along with our Lord Jesus. Yes, we truly do thank him for his love, his mercy, his forgiveness, for making us his very own children and for forgiving us this wonderful place to gather together to hear his word and to worship him. Now, the psalmist also says that we are to praise him 
Praise is different from thanking God. Because when we praise God, we're no longer speaking to God directly. But now we are also speaking to others here on earth, announcing to them the wonders that our loving God has accomplished. And not only for us, but for all people. And so how do we praise Him? You do it by coming here tonight, by your coming here. You're making a statement to the world around you. Yeah, maybe they don't care, you know. But nonetheless, you're making a statement. You're saying, I'm here because my Lord Jesus and my faith is all important. That's numero uno, number one in my life. And I want to keep growing in my faith, my love and appreciation for the Lord. And so that's a way. You make a statement out there and how you praise the Lord every time you come. And then, by your offerings. So that others, not only here at Grace, but our mission offerings or to FEL, or others, foreign and home missions, the people may have the opportunity to come to faith as you have and receive that joy of, of, of being at peace with the Lord. And I think of our FEL students and their opportunity that as they go to school there and, and learn the word that as they move on into life, they can share that wonderful message of salvation with others. And then, it also, you find yourself praising the Lord when you leave here. And as you leave here, the Spirit is there to help you let your faith shine so that others can see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Yeah, there's those that will think you're weird, you're strange, you're foolish for being a Christian. But that's okay. Don't worry. <clears throat> Don't worry about it. We're supposed to be different from the rest of the sinful world out there. Let your light shine. Praise the Lord by the way that you live and conduct your life. Certainly, as I said, we want to celebrate the Lord's goodness. And we do it by not, by not only thanking Him personally, but by praising Him before others. And then the psalmist says, The Lord is good and His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Yeah, as we thank Him for His love, and mercy, His forgiveness, we are to remember that His faithfulness continues throughout all generations, ever since the days of Adam and Eve. And over the last 32 years, I do have to admit that there were concerns on whether or not we would be able to make those monthly payments, especially when our offerings came up short. But you know what happened each time? The Lord said, no, you're not going to close your doors. I'm going to make sure they stay open. And you're going to continue to proclaim the good news of salvation. Yeah. Over the years, as I said, we've had to watch our expenses, and especially when COVID hit. Because we were 8,000 in the red, with no real signs of recovery. And we thought, ooh, now we had to close our church because of COVID. And if people didn't send in their offerings, in six months, we would have had to close our doors. Most of you don't know that, do you? It was close. And we prayed to the Lord. And the Lord remained faithful. He opened your hearts. And He led you to give. 
so that we could meet our expenses and to continue to proclaim his gospel. Yes, it is he who led us out of debt and gave us the ability to pay off our mortgage. Here again, you see how he remained faithful to us. And this is the same faithfulness that will continue through all generations to come as well. What is in store for the future? We don't know. Nobody knows. Not any church. No. I mean, we could all die tomorrow. Or maybe the Lord might come back tomorrow and take us all home to heaven. That wouldn't be so bad. Or then again, maybe the Lord, God willing, will grant us another 75 years here at Grace. Or even more. But in the meantime, we have His promise that He will continue to bless us with the, the truth of His Word and to care for us in His faithfulness as long as we remain here on this earth. And so tonight as we celebrate the Lord's goodness, as He is merciful, forgiving, loving, and faithful to His promises to the very end, May our past history help us all to trust in what he has proclaimed to us. Yes, let us celebrate God's goodness. Let us thank him for his mercy, his faithfulness. As he has brought us together as his dear children to celebrate together as brothers and sisters of his precious family. And again, thank him again, not only for each other, but also for this wonderful facility. May we never ever take it for granted, but be grateful and thankful for what he has given us. Yes, let's write our thank you note every day. Thank you, Lord. For this wonderful facility. God be with you all. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. Amen. Let us arise for prayer and then following our prayer we will continue with the praying of the Lord's Prayer in the left-hand column on, in the middle of page 60. Almighty God, with gladness we give thanks for your merciful goodness. We bless you for the love which has created and sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom you have revealed your grace and truth. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, whom you've sent to lend us, to lead us to faith, and who preserves us as members of your family. You have given us new birth to a living hope through the word of Christ and the sacraments. Renew our zeal for the work that lies before us, and enable us to labor diligently for you, in your kingdom before the night comes when no one can work and may the light of your son Jesus be reflected in us as we offer ourselves to your service and we thank you once again Lord for this wonderful facility to be able to come to worship you to praise you to honor you to be able to come and confess our sins to receive your forgiveness and to be able to grow in our faith and love and appreciation Thank you, Lord, and help us never, ever take this facility for granted. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and in whose name we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works come from you. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and defend us also from the fear of our enemies, that we may live in peace and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And together let us read the song of Simeon. In peace, Lord, you let your servant now depart according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for every people, a light to lighten the Gentiles, and the glory of your people, Israel. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be and abide with you all. Amen. You may be seen. Again, good evening to everyone. Great to see all of you here this evening. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Uh, again, if you're interested in a God's creation calendar, please sign up on the sign-up sheet there by the uh, coat rack on the table. Um, let's see, this coming uh, Tuesday, tomorrow, is our council and budget meeting, and we will be working on our budget for 2022. And then also, I put up another sign-up sheet if you're interested. We are not going to be using the new hymnal as long as I'm here. We don't have the money yet to save up to get the new hymnal. But if you would like a copy of one, um, there's, a, there's one on a white and black table out there. Um, if you want to look at it, don't take it. We want you to, it's just there for you to look at. But if you would like a Pew edition, that's the hardcover, that is uh, $24. And the gift edition is $52. Now, I know that some people had told me earlier they wanted hymnals, and my wife reminded me, and I thought, oh, man, I don't know who wants a hymnal, who doesn't. So that's why I put up the sign-up sheet. And uh, so sign your name on that. It's by the uh, flower chart there. And if you want your name on it, um, it'll cost you an extra $10 for that. Plus, there'll be shipping and handling. So... Um, but yeah, in time, the new hymnal will be used here at Grace. So, and the other news I wanted to share with you is I did talk to our district president, Pastor Joel Zane, and uh, he has now officially put my name on the retirement list, and so that the wheels get going there at Senate office and know that I'm going to be retiring from next May 15th. And um, we are going to be making our first call the middle of January. And uh, hopefully somebody will take that call. Um, if not, we'll still have time to call from the field a second time. And if that doesn't work, then we can go through the seminary see if we can get a graduate. But uh, in the meantime, I will continue to, to serve you. It's going to be a busy year, I know. And uh, I will continue to do the best I can uh, to share God's word with you and to serve you as brothers and sisters in Christ. And uh, so with that, I wish... I love you.
God's richest blessings, uh, and may you have a wonderful week. No organist, so you can leave whenever.